and welcome back to Today I'm Talking To. And today I am talking to actor, voiceover, artist, actor. I'm actually not sure if the term we prefer, but we'll get there. And all around phenomenally talented human being, Jack Dylan. Hello. Yay. So first question, just a fun, silly one to get it started. What is like the, uh, you're a voiceover actor um, and otherwise, but that's something that you do a lot of. What is the silliest or like the strangest voice that you can do and can you do it now yeah so um my favorite go-to is actually the voice that got me um a job on a netflix show uh because i had to play this weird like rat character um in this like video game uh called chimera land which is about it's like an rpg online MMO where everyone is are, like are, they're animals. <laughs> so it was like an hour long session of me like being gorillas and cats. And um, <laughs> then we got to rats and I was like, you know, I love New York. I don't live there, but I, I'm a big fan of the rats there. And when I was there, I, you know, I always had like a voice whenever I would see one. So we kind of talked like this and he loves eating pizza and he's just so excited to be eating food all the time. <laughs> he gets so excited about things and he's so pumped. He's like so excited to be here. <laughs> um, so I use that voice a lot because not a lot of people can do that voice apparently, which I'm like, really? I'm like, I feel like I, anyone can. It's a Jack Dylan original. It's a so. all in card. Um, anyway. On to uh, your life and career. I know you from uh, acting, but you've really branched out in so many ways. But what do you think is the moment in your childhood or at what point did you realize you wanted to become an actor? And I don't necessarily mean like, oh, I did this show and then did this, but there, was there like a moment within your family that you're like, you know what? I think performing might kind of be my thing. Yeah, um, I played baseball a lot. And I just love like the performance of it. Like I thought like the whole thing was like a show, like I was really good at it. So I liked having people look at me. And then I ended up like just being a lot of shows and I was like, oh wait, people can look at me and I don't have to like be athletic about it. Um, kind of <laughs> love that. So then I was like, let me, let me be an actor. And then I like saw like, Literally, I saw like a VHS tape of Cats that we were forced to watch in middle school. And, you know, you know, a lot of people turn their eyes away from the original <laughs> production. But I, I was like so intrigued by it. And I was like, I want to be a cat. This looks so insane. And people are getting paid to do this. So I do have to credit Cats of the original recording as um, an inspiration for me, for sure. That is insane. When I was in kindergarten, one of my formative memories, I don't know why, is we were all in the, the Snoopy room because it was raining outside, so they couldn't bring us outside for recess. And so we were in the <laughs> Snoopy room and they played the original recording of Cats. <laughs> Cats is just... <laughs> oh my God. Music it Cats. It's not a good show. But the... Um, no, it's not it good is, at all. If you can sit through Cats, it's like, maybe I belong in this world. I know. Maybe I understand. Maybe I get it. What was the first but, show you were ever in? I was in Beauty and the Beast Jr. Um, and I was um, La Fou, the Fool, um, gay icon, uh, according to Disney, uh, <laughs> with a cis straight actor, Josh Gad, love him. Um, but yeah, he was. that was my first role and I just really liked making people laugh and I was like, oh wait, I can make people laugh even more when I'm silly characters on stage. And that was fun. Yeah, so how old were you when you uh, did Beauty and the Beast? Eight. Eight, yeah, okay, so that's a pretty normal, like, I feel like that's the earliest people with some autonomy are like, your parents are like, you should do the show, and you're like, fine, but at eight, yeah. you also say no, so I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all in. Um, but the funny thing about that is like, I was such like a Disney Channel freak and I would watch like High School Musical and stuff. And I would watch like the bloopers of all of the like those films. And I remember I didn't understand what rehearsal was. So I would like go into rehearsal and I was doing the scene with the girl playing Belle, like this um, high schooler. 
And I purposely was like messing up because I thought that's like what it was supposed to be like. Like, oh, this is like the blooper reel. So then I'm like breaking and I'm like doing this like on purpose because I think it's like it's supposed <laughs> to be like that. And they're like, what are you doing? And I was like, isn't this like what it's supposed to be? It's rehearsal, it's fun. And I completely look back at that and I'm like, wow, I, I really was bold then and so delusional. Wow, you were just like a time for me to come in here and just like, um, <laughs> mess it all up. We need content for the bloopers. Like we need. Memories. I know. I know. It's like where are the cameras. I got. I'm playing with the cameras. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Were there on just on this topic? Like, is there anything else you know that you? And I'm gonna ask this question again later on different things. But like through your time as an actor and doing theater, what do you think is the most surprising lesson you've ever learned? Where you're like, I don't think it's not something you would assume to learn but something that you're like, wow, you know what? That's actually a really important piece of like being a professional actor. Um, I would say just not ever like talking like back at a director. It, I think it's the most cringe. Like when someone gives you a note, like you have to just say yes. Even if it doesn't make any sense, you have to say yes because I've been in the room before. I've been in the rooms with like professional actors where like the director on the call is like saying, okay, do this. And then they're either like super uh, defensive and they're like, no, I don't think so. Or they start like horrendously berating themselves and, be, and they're like, oh, right, I'm such an idiot. I'm so sorry. Like, oh, like, I'm so sorry. I'm not at that level, right? It just like wastes time and it's so cringe. Um, so I would say, yeah, that's the most important takeaway. Just take every note and say yes. Yes. The people I end up talking to in these interview series, there are a lot of artists in different capacities. And it's interesting because that's kind of what it comes down to with so many at the end of the day. It's like, you can, I, I firmly believe you can, somebody who's terrible can happen to give you a good note. Do you know what I mm. mean? Like it doesn't even yeah. have to be from the director necessarily, but you can take it and it doesn't have to hit you emotionally. Like it just goes into like the little cerebral, like, okay, like that's there. It doesn't have to, you're not like, I'm the worst. It's like, no, no, they just want you to move to the left. <laughs> Different. Exactly. Um, and whenever someone talks back, it's like so annoying for the other people in the room. Cause it's like, you're wasting time and you look like a fool. Exactly. <laughs> a fool. Um, but anyway, so you had uh, started doing theater when you were young, worked your way through, went to acting school, which I know, spoiler alert for the others. Uh, but after uh, acting school, I know you made the move from the East Coast out to L.A. Can you speak a little to the, the decision to go head, head to the, the Sunshine Coast? That's not what people say. Sunshine State. Uh, what yeah. are they I don't know. I was going to move to New York City because I love it. And then the pandemic happened and then nothing was happening. And I we graduated in the middle of it. So the only place that was open and things that were happening was L.A. because they kind of were delayed in like the severity of the pandemic. So I was getting restless and I was like doing a lot of auditions from home. And I just was like with my living with my parents and I was like, I need to get out of here because I feel like I'm not where I need to be to make connections because that's what I like to do. I like talking to people and getting to know them through the work. And I can't do that if I can't move to New York City right now where the work is not really happening for the stuff that I want to do and not from over a Zoom call um, because that, you know, I, I had like a lot of hits from agents that were like from New York and for from like Atlanta. And they were all like not nice people. And uh, the only nice people were the LA people. And then when I came here, like I literally just decided one night, I was like, I'm gonna move there. And then my parents were nice enough to be like, okay. And I found like this listing on Craigslist that could have been a scam. Uh, and I completely went with it. This person could have been a catfish. I gave them money. I then got on a plane like the next week and then flew out. Also before I crashed my parents' car, because I did like Instacart as a way to make money through the pandemic. And I was like so nervous about moving that like I had this giant order of alcohol. Like I'm talking like $300 worth of alcohol from like this convenience store that I was delivering to this like cul-de-sac neighborhood. It was like a young couple. And like they're gonna have a really good night because I had so much alcohol. Um, 
But then I turned left uh, in front of a police station and a Tesla uh, just like T-boned me and just like when I tell you like it like T-boned my car and the alcohol it seemed to evaporate like the glass seemed to just evaporate and just alcohol went everywhere all over me all over the car it looked like someone got shot in my car because there was a lot of wine um like the and the tesla guy he turns out to be the head of psychology at i think umass i think um and he was so mean like he was so mean and i was like i ran out of my car i was so like delusional like i was so in shock and i was like are you okay are you okay can i get you anything like and it happened right in front of a police station. So the police just kind of like sauntered out being like, hey, what's going on? And I was like, I'm going to LA tomorrow. Like, I don't know what's going on. Um, long story <laughs> short, everything was squared away. I went out to dinner and then I got on a plane and got here. And it wasn't a scam. Um, it was it was real. And then I, um, I got a meeting the next day and signed with an agent. That is so incredible. And so with the, um, I mean, crazy story. Also, were the police like out of, out of curiosity, just because you were covered in alcohol? Like, did that come up? Oh, yeah. I had to justify why I had so much alcohol uh, <laughs> and I was covered in it. I like was like, I work for Instacart. Like, this is the order. Like, help. Um, and, uh, the young couple was actually like two blocks away. And they like, I like text them like, your alcohol, like, is destroyed like I just crashed my car on your street and then they came out and they're like the most earthy crunchy like hippie people ever they're like oh baby like everything's gonna be okay don't worry about it oh my god and there's one like bottle of wine intact and they're like I'm just gonna take this and then they left but they were able to corroborate corroborate with the police that like I wasn't like drunk <laughs> You were just driving an obscene amount of alcohol. I know, too much, too much, too much alcohol. I'm always afraid of getting into a car crash with a Tesla, actually, because I'm just like, that's such an accident. That's a, that's a lot of a car crash. The car was completely fine. My car was totaled. So annoying. So, like, he should have been the nice one, but it's fine. Yeah, and he wasn't. And then my dad came, and he was, like, so mad. He was, like... He was like, for someone who was the head of psychology, he really was really mean to you when you were like, in shock. And I'm like, I know. You really went from the pandemic, which is like its own kind of, like the, sh the full shutdown, which is its own kind of trauma energy to a car crash that literally the next day you're in living in Los Angeles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow, so you had like a very kind of dramatic moving to LA experience. Oh yeah crazy like was there ever a moment during all of that where you were like I have made an error or was it more Strangely, like, yeah. like no <laughs> I was like because like I feel like even if I did to move to New York City with like what happens to me what the universe does to me the universe tends to like give me like really hard lessons horrible lessons that I have to then learn and then it rewards me so uh -huh. I was like this would happen in New York but I feel like in New York something worse could have happened. Like, I just, because New York, I love, but the city is the city. And I'm like, maybe I could have gotten like hit by a train. I've gotten hit by buses before. So like, I'm not like that, I'm accident prone. So no, I mean, I, I think it was part of the experience and it's like good stories and I'm happy it all happened to me because like, if nothing happened, that would be really boring at parties. I I completely agree. One of my very best friends is a, a, her big phrase is do it for the plot. And I really, I believe in that wholeheartedly. I'm like, what are you going to talk about? Just, you got to dive in. Because um, <laughs> even the bad stories, it's like, give me like one minute and then this is going to be amazing to talk about. <laughs> yes. What was the moment that you, it kind of sat, or maybe you haven't had that moment yet, but from the outside, I kind of assume you, like that you sat and you're like, wow, yeah, I am a working actor in Los Angeles. Like that. I think, um, mm, there's just been so many. Most, yeah. The most recent one this year is like the Netflix thing. Cause I was like, I, I like, I didn't audition for this. Like it was given to me because the director I worked on that game, Chimera Land, it all comes back to that yeah. game. Um, he liked me and I offhandedly said I wanted to like do like dubbing for cartoons and he was like yeah you know like 
I'll send you auditions. I'm connected. He's really connected. His name's Michael Sorich. He's incredible. Uh, he's been a voice for everything. Incredible person. One of the, actually, he is the kindest and most influential person in my career right now as like a mentor, like he is on it. But like, I offhandedly said that. And then I was like, just walking around, like doing my job at Instacart. And I was in Sprouts, which is essentially like a more, a more, a poorer Whole Foods mm -hmm. and like m merge with Trader Joe's. And I get a call saying I got it. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I was like, what is happening? What, what do you mean? The audition? And they're like, no, my agent was like, no, we have an offer. I'm like, I didn't audition for anything. And she was like, yeah, it's an offer. And I was like, okay, for what? And she's like, yeah, for like a series, an original series. And I was like, what? Okay, all right. And I was like, for what? Like background? Because usually with voiceover, you like start, you start doing background, it's called Walla. So like you're brought in with a couple other people that they, the industry kind of like is looking at and they like, and then you like just essentially improv, like just random conversations to picture of like, there's people walking around and you're like, wow, I really like what's going on here. Wow, I love that dress. Like you just keep making stuff yeah. up and they fill in the blanks. And then you graduate to named roles. But I was given like three named roles and I was like, whoa, like that is, I cut the line. Like that's what I felt like, whoa everything that I've worked for has now paid off because I was just given offer only shit. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, that's wow. crazy. So was it really a thing where you had just expressed like, oh, like what was the thing that jump started your interest in voiceover work or was it just- um, I've always yeah. been interested in it. Ever since I was a kid, I have this strange, I wouldn't call it a fetish, I would say I'm very attracted emotionally to animators and artists, like people who can create figures and, and worlds with their hands and their minds. Like, I think that is very, very attractive. And ever since I was a kid, I loved cartoons and I was just like, well, how do I do this? And I would play a lot of video games and it was like, these are people, these are motion capture actors like doing this, like, how do I do it? And then I like, it was a hobby and then you know, um, I like, we, we both, we went to London. Um, we studied with people, like people who were at the top of their level and, you know, Barbara Hausman like did a whole unit of voiceover. And then I worked with someone named Yvonne Morley who was Barbara Hausman's friend. And I was like, oh my God, like I have the tools to do it. So actually, you know, Kevin and Rivera. Uh, I do. <laughs> Kevin's awesome. Uh, and Kevin was doing the voiceover thing first and I was just always watching him being like how is he doing this and I would send him things and he would like give me guidance to change it I owe a lot of like my interest to Kevin um and Kevin's killing it he's like on Disney Junior all the time he's like a singing pirate like he's like literally like a staple Disney actor now which is like insane and he's worked so hard to get where he is and it's so admirable um I'm gonna get him on here soon so fingers crossed but tease for okay. Kevin <laughs> yes um but like I don't know. I'm always interested in new forms of media for like acting and storytelling. And to be honest, like TV and film, which I've been on before is exciting, but I feel like that's not the future. I feel like the future of entertainment is digital and that is all encompassing, mm -hmm. whether it's like a virtual reality show, like anything, I think that's what's coming. And I was like, I might as well get the jump on it and try to be established enough. So when things start popping off, I'll, people will know who I am. Um, so I kind of just like went all in on it. And, you know, the training for like just a regular stage actor is the same training as a voice actor. Um, the the diff There's a big difference between TV, film and, and then theater. And you have to learn a different technique. And to be honest, a thing about me is I love cutting corners. Uh, I love cutting corners and cheat codes. So I was like, wait, voiceover is a great way to get on TV without changing any of my training. So yeah. then I was like, oh, wait. And then it worked. But it's a lot of like, I know it sounds like, wow, like this person just like talked to someone and he got this thing. Like, it's not that like, I think, I don't even know what the number is now because I don't count how many auditions I send out. I think I've sent over like 500 tapes since living here for two years. 
Yeah. Oh my God. No, I believe it. And forever, everyone listening, I can vouch Jack Dylan, one of the hardest working actors there is. Honestly, 10 out of 10. I so wish, like- I wish it was easy. And I've met people who are like, who are like, yeah, like I just started and I got it. And for voiceover, it's so common because a lot of people don't have training. You don't need training to be a voiceover actor. You'll get work faster if you are. Mm-hmm. But I know people like, I always bring up this person that I've, I haven't worked with yet, but I talked to him and he's, I, I admire him. His name's AJ Beckles. And he, he was like a Twitter VO, like uh, the voiceover Twitter is like crazy. Like you could get chased off of voiceover Twitter. I, I know a lot of people who are on like, oh, voiceover Twitter, voiceover Twitter. So can you kind of speak to what that is? Oh, it's a, it's a toxic place. <laughs> it's, like I it's like you know like cringy glee musical theater memes it's like that but real life like the people there are like so like cutthroat over things that don't really matter like there will be like a casting call on twitter for like for like I don't know a roblox thing and it pays like five dollars a line and it's a non-union thing no one will ever see it no no one will care about this video but people like will sell their soul to this person. They'll send, they'll give them like their social security number. Like people on VO Twitter are hungry to work. They're so thirsty uh, to work on stuff, but um, it's a bad place if you're not liked, but it's a great way to build an audience. Another actor that I so much, have so much respect for, his name is Ryan Colt Levy. And he was a New York actor. And during the pandemic, he moved to Los Angeles. He was like, doing acting wasn't really working for like TV, film and theater. And he was a rock star. So he has control over his voice and he moved out here and kind of, I think similar to me, he like made a good connection with an agent and like got on this show. And he just was in the highest grossing anime movie of all time of late, the new My Hero Academia movie. Um, And he was a lead, he was the lead character in it. And I'm on a show with him he's on my show that's <laughs> and he, insane and I was like dude like I I look up to you so much like I love you're like bohemia he's like bohemian man like so bohemian and he's like talking at like comic cons he's being brought everywhere he's working all the time and I, I now I'm on a show with him and I was like whoa what is like that's also a moment where I was like what is happening like all these people that I was observing I'm now working with yeah like people are like i wish i could be have what he has i'm with him i'm in something with him which is just so cool like the the, i don't know if anyone's a fan of like uh uh adventures of gumball um but like it's a cartoon network show about like this blue cat and it's like super like fun um but the voice of gumball that i love that show and he's on my show like he is on the show so I'm working with people that I literally would never in a million years ever think I'd be working with now. Um, yeah. But it's crazy. So uh, you started off <laughs> with the video game Chimera Land, but now you're uh, doing uh, the voice dubbing for the anime Comey We Can't Communicate on Netflix. So what has that jump been like? What has that adventure been like that brought you there? And just what's that process like? Cause that's an insane get, like congratulations. Thank you so much. The whole process has been really, really cool. Um, everyone on that show is so, so nice. Um, Michael Sorge is the director. He is, he's done so much for me. I'm going through a rough time in my family right now. And he was nice enough to like, when I told him, like I was it like this bad, bad news broke. And then I had to go in to record and I was like a little sad. And he was asking me, I, he was like happy. And I was like, not to be a bummer, but like, if I'm off today, I shouldn't be, but like, this is what's up. And he like, he like stopped what he was doing. And he like gave me like the biggest hug. Like he, this man held me. Like he did not, he, did, he held me. He said, everything would be okay. He'd be like, we need to like hang out. We need to like go on a hike. Uh, you need to let me know you're okay. And then he got me like tickets to see Dear Evan Hansen, like at the Almond Street Theater. Yeah, like for free. Like he just gave me his tickets. And I was like, cause he's a season pass member. And I was like, whoa, this is so nice. So 
I've been so fortunate to work with these wonderful, talented people. Um, and you know, the funny thing is, I didn't know going into it if it was going to be difficult for me or not, because I never had done anime dubbing before. It's something I wanted to do, mm -hmm. but I was being thrown in as like a recurring character in a season. And the how they do it, it's so interesting. You go in for like a couple sessions, like like for three weeks, and it's the entire show. You have to, and then it skips around. So you have no, you don't know what the script is. You don't know anything. Um, you just go in and you do it. Uh, and the lines are there and you do the best you can and you move on. Um, so like when you go into record, like you've never been able to like read a full script. You're just like- No, no. But the, the good thing is, is that the original in Japanese comes out first. So I get to watch the show. So I know what I'm doing. So then I come in and I dub it in English. So I know what is happening in context. So it's not just like me just saying lines because that would stress me out if I don't really know what's happening. But that's common. Like a lot of games that I do, like I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm saying. Like a line will be like, like, um, will be like, so-and-so, how dare you do this to my family? Like, but I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know what, who, what I am. I don't know where I am. I just need to go off of what the director tells me. And I think I'm really good at cold reading. So it works. Mm -hmm. um, but like the whole thing was just so magical and fun. And I, I love it. Yay. So what, aside from the ones that you've, things you've dubbed for, what is your personal favorite anime? My personal favorite anime? That's a hard question. It's Haikyuu. I immediately answered mm -hmm. the question. Haikyuu is, 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 uh, <laughs> is about a sports team, like a volleyball sports team. And they're like the underdogs. No one, li no one likes them. Like they're a loser team. And then they rise up through the ranks and through friendship and like communication. And it's so accurate to what like volleyball is uh -huh. that it's like you can, I learned how to play volleyball from the anime. Uh, which was so cool. And one of my friends is actually on it. So it's cool to like know people who are on shows that I watch. Um, and yeah, I love Haikyuu. I'm, I'm blanking on uh, the lead character, but my friend Cyrus Rodas is um, a, recur a recurring character on the newest season of the show. Uh, and again, me and Cyrus have worked on a lot of other things and he's based in Texas and he's been on so many like he's been on like Fear the Walking Dead, like as like a physical actor, but he has like, this incredible, like booming voice, incredibly talented actor for voice. Um, and it's cool to know that like I've been on other projects with him and he's on like my favorite show because the voiceover world is so small. Like everyone knows everybody, but that makes it extremely like scary because everyone knows everybody. So you have to make sure you're pleasant all the time and you're never, never difficult you're always good um, because if you're not, it, word will get around and you'll never work again. Mm -hmm. Like it's so scary because it's so exclusive. Like I'm so lucky to be part of it because so many people want it, but it's all connection based really. If anyone wants to get into it, it's all connection based um, and just keep trying. Are you trying to solely be like, I want to do voiceover, that's it. I want to be a big voiceover person. Or are you trying to take that and be back in like on stage on screen I don't want to say I'm trying to get my master's degree Carly I'm gonna to try to get my master's degree in acting um I'm looking at a couple places San Diego San Diego uh university seems very very interesting to me and as fate would have it <laughs> um today I recorded a tv commercial for San Diego State University so maybe that's fate um <laughs> I so think that's my, fate when I go in to audition for them, I'll be like, hey, by the way, I have rec I've done an ad for you. So, you know, I already am part of the school. So you should accept exactly. me. Oh my God, wait, that's such a fun fact. You're, that's a perfect <laughs> audition fact. Like, hi, so I'm the one advertising your school. So if you don't let me in, I can really ruin this whole commercial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 Cher's commercial is like I'm in this commercial and they didn't let me in Can't <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah to answer your question better uh I I don't know I think voiceover allows me to be it it allows me 
to do anything because it's so flexible. I'm so lucky to be part of it. And there's so much work in it that the quick turnaround, like I got this like TV commercial thing last night and I recorded it to like an hour ago. Like yeah. it's so fast and the work's so abundant that I need to pay my bills and I'm going to go to the thing that's paying my bills right now. Mm -hmm. um, Greg Webster was a teacher of ours and that's what he told us to do. And I understand why he said that because living out in LA is really expensive and I need a, like income and TV and film stuff. Like it's the work is far and few between and theater. The, the commitment is really big and the payout is fine. But the, like the hours and the commitment is too much that you can't do other things with it. Yeah. Um, so I'm sticking with voiceover right now. I'm getting a lot of cool opportunities and stuff and, you know, I'm, again, really lucky to be part of it all, but I, I really love theater. I miss it. I'm trying to do theater as much as I can. I just saw The Inheritance Part 1 at the Geffen, um, which I haven't seen The Inheritance before. Um, I know it lost to Slave Play, and that made me very angry um, because I love Slave Play. But I watched The Inheritance, and I think the performances are really good, and, like, it made me excited to be, like, seeing good actors on stage. And I was like, wow, this is what I want to be still part of. So that's why I'm trying to get to grad school. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Absolutely. And so final question before uh, we have to wrap, unfortunately. But unrelated or related to uh, acting and voiceover work, what is something you wish more people would ask you about? Or like that you, you wish you got to talk about more? Anything else. Anything else. Uh, <laughs> anything else, Carly. Uh, the crazy oh. thing is like, not to be that girl, but it's just so, it's so my life that like, I'm so bored of talking about it. And the only thing that I like talking about is helping others get to where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Cause I think there's so much space for other people on, like, I want to end up being a teacher. Like, so like, I want, I want people to like come cause it's so again, not to humble brag, but it's so isolating being, it's so lonely yeah. when you don't have like experiences to share with other people that you know that are trying to get the same thing. And I have a lot of actor friends and I understand it's so hard and we got to keep going, keep going and try to get it. But like, I have so many other interests. Like I love the outdoors. I love hiking. I want to go camping. I love exploring abandoned buildings, like, and awesome. creating imaginary scenarios about like, there's a ghost in here. Let's find it. Like, I love that kind of stuff. And I really love, um, I really enjoy traveling. I love just going to different countries and exploring different cultures. Uh, and that's what you know inspires me to do my work. But, you know, as an actor, you, especially when I'm, I'm dating now, everybody, I'm dating. Oh. <laughs> uh, no one has claimed me yet. Uh, however, like a lot of it is like trying to explain to people what I do mm -hmm. and like, the cool buzzwords like I'm on a Netflix show and then they're like <laughs> oh okay um okay okay um but also like I don't want to talk about that I want to talk about something that isn't a career in my life my emotional life I think are two separate things career is wonderful but my emotional life is so much more it has I have so much more to give in my emotional life to others than my career. My career is kind of just um, for me, uh, but. I completely understand that. That is, because yeah. I think people get so excited because they hear something that it's like, oh, no one does that. It's artsy, it's whimsical. And it's like, oh, we're gonna talk about this for an hour. You're basically just asking, like if you were an accountant and we stood here talking about like, oh, what do you do in a day as an accountant? How's accounting going? You would <laughs> be bored. Like, I, yeah, yeah. Like there's and other like, stuff. Right, and even like the audition thing, I'm so, I'm so lucky to get auditions all the time. But whenever I say, it's so funny because like when people, when I tell people like, oh, I have like all these auditions that I'm doing. And like, to me, I'm like so emotionally tired. Like it's so tiring to just do it, uh, especially when there's too much. I'm like, congratulations. And I'm like, I didn't get the job yet, nor did I get it. But thank you so much for telling me that. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, um, just anyone ask me anything else, anything. Tight, we love it. All right, well, that is, uh, we have, are unfortunately out of time. Uh, Jack, where can other people find you? Do you have social media, anything coming up people should check out? 
Yes, I have social media. Uh, Jack Dylan official at uh, Instagram.com. Why did I say that? It's not a website. It is a website. <laughs> um, and check out season two of Comey Can't Communicate. The dub is out now and it's really good. The show is fantastic. And if you, it's a show about social anxiety. And if anyone out there like me has anxiety, it kind of makes you not feel alone because you're seeing like, yeah, people with anxiety have feelings too and they can have friends. Awesome. Well, uh, it was so great to talk to Absolutely. you. Absolutely, yeah. Yay. Thanks for watching. And stars, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Yay! Yay!